अर्नेस्ट मेयर बॉर्न ऑन फिफ्थ जुलाई 1904 इन कैम्पटन जर्मनी अर्नेस्ट मेयर द हार्वर्ड यूनिवर्सिटी एवोल्यूशनरी बायोलॉजिस्ट हु हैज़ बीन कॉल्ड द डाविन ऑफ द ट्वेंटी सेंचुरी वाज वन ऑफ द हंड्रेड ग्रेटेस्ट साइंटिस्ट ऑफ ऑल टाइम मेयर जॉइंट हार्वर्ड फैकल्टी ऑफ आर्ट्स एंड साइंस इन नाइनटीन एंड रिटायर्ड इन नाइनटीन सेवेंटी फाइव टाइटल ऑफ एलेक्जेंडर अगैसिस प्रोफेसर ऑफ जोलॉजी एमेरिटस मेयर वॉज अवॉर्डेड द प्राइज Three prizes widely regarded as the Triple Crown of Biology, the Balzan Prize, the International Prize for Biology, and the Crawford Prize. He almost single-handedly made the origin of species diversity the central question of evolutionary biology that it is today. He also pioneered the currently accepted definition of the biological species. Chapter One: The Living World. growth reproduction ability to sense environment and mount a suitable response come to our mind immediately as unique features of living organism one can add a few more like metabolism ability to self replicate self organize interact and emergence to this list let us try to understand each of these all living organism grow increase in mass and increase in number of individuals are the twin characteristic of growth a multicellular organism grow by cell division in plants this growth by cell division occurs continuously throughout the life span in animals this growth is seen only up to a certain age however cell division occurs in certain tissues to replace lost cell unicellular organism grows by cell division one can easily observe this in the in vitro culture by simply counting the number of cells under the microscope in majority of higher animals and plants growth and reproduction are mutually exclusive event one must remember that increase in body mass is considered as growth non living objects also grow if we take increase in body mass as a criterion for growth mountains boulders and sand mounds do grow however this kind of growth exhibited by non living object is by accumulation of material on the surface in the living organism growth is from inside growth therefore under growth therefore cannot be taken as a defining property of living organism conditions under which it can be observed is in all living organism have to be explained and then we can understand that it is a characteristic of living system a dead organism does not grow reproduction likewise is a characteristic of living organism in multicellular organisms reproduction refer to the production of progeny possessing features more or less similar to those of the parents invariably and implicitly we refer to sexual reproduction organism reproduce by asexual means also fungi multiply and spreads easily due to the millions of asexual spores they produce in lower organism like yeast and hydra we observe budding in planaria flatworms we observe true regeneration that is a fragmented organism regenerates the lost part of the body and becomes a new organism the fungi the filamentous algae and the protonym of mosses all easily multiply by fragmentation when it comes to the unicellular organism like bacteria unicellular algae or amoeba reproduction is synonymous with growth that is increase in number of cells we have already defined growth as equivalent to increase in cell number or mass hence we notice that in single cell organisms we are not very clear about the usage of the these two terms growth and reproduction further there are many organisms which do not reproduce example mules sterile worker bees infertile human couples etc hence reproduction also cannot be an all inclusive defining characteristic of living organisms of course no living object is cap- no non living object is capable of reproducing or replicating by itself another characteristic of life is metabolism all living organisms are made up of chemicals these chemicals small and big belonging to various classes sizes functions etc are constantly being made and changed into some other biomolecules these conversions are chemical reactions or metabolic reactions there are thousands of metabolic reactions occurring simultaneously inside all living organisms be they unicellular or multicellular all plants animals fungi and microbes exhibit metabolism the sum total of all the chemical reactions occurring in our body is metabolism no non living object exhibits metabolism metabolic reactions can be demonstrated outside the body in a cell free system An isolated metabolic reaction outside the body of an organism performed in a test tube is neither living nor non-living. Hence, while metabolism is defining feature of all living organism without exception, isolated metabolic reaction in vitro are not living things but surely living reactions. Hence, cellular organization of the body is a defining feature of the life forms. 
perhaps the most obvious and the technically complicated feature of all living organism is this ability to sense their environment and surrounding and respond to these environmental stimuli which could be physical chemical or biological we sense our environment through our sense organs plant respond to the external factors like light water temperature other organisms pollutants etc all organism from the prokaryotes to the most complex eukaryotes can sense and respond to the environmental cues photoperiod affects reproduction in seasonal breeder both plants and animals all organism handle chemical entering their body all organism therefore are aware of their surrounding human being is the only organism who is aware of himself that is has self consciousness consciousness therefore becomes the defining property of living organism when it comes to the human beings it is all the more difficult to determine the living determine and define the living state we observe patients lying in the coma in the hospital virtually supported by machine which replace the heart and lung the patient is otherwise brain dead the patient has no self consciousness in higher classes you will come to know that all living phenomena are due to the underlying interaction properties of tissue are not present in the constituent cells but arise as a result of interaction among the constituent cells similarly properties of cellular organelle are not present in the molecular constituent of the organelle but arise as a result of interaction among the molecular components comprising the organelle these interaction result in the emergent properties at the higher level of organization this phenomenon is true in the hierarchy of organizational complexity at all levels therefore we can say that living organism are self replicating evolving and self regulating interactive system capable of responding to external stimuli biology is the story of life on earth biology is the story of evolution of living organism on earth all living organism present past and future are linked to one another by the sharing of common genetic material but to varying degrees diversity in living organism if you look around you will see a large variety of living organism be it potted plants insects birds your pets or other animals and plants there are also several organism that you cannot see with your naked eyes but they are all around you if you were to increase the area that you make observation in the range and variety of organism that you see would increase obviously if you were to visit a dense forest you would probably see a much greater number and kind of living organism in it each different kind of plant and animal or organism that you see represent a species the number of species that are known and described range between 1.7 to 1.8 million this refers to biodiversity or the number and the type of organism present on earth we should remember here that as we explore new areas and even the old ones new organism are continuously being identified as stated earlier there are millions of plants and animals in the world we know that plants and animals in our own area by their local names these local names would vary from place to place even within the country probably you would recognize the confusion that would be created if we did not find ways and means to talk to each other to refer to organism we are talking about hence there is a need to standardize the naming of living organism such that a particular organism is known by the same name all over the world this process is called nomenclature obviously nomenclature or naming is only possible when the organism is described correctly and we know to what organism the name is attached to this is identification in order to facilitate the study number of scientists have established procedure to assign a scientific name to each organism each known organism this is be and this is acceptable to the biologist all over the world for plant scientific names are based on the agreed principles and criteria which are provided in international code for botanical nomenclature you may ask how are animals named animal taxonomists have evolved international code for zoological nomenclature the scientist names ensure that each organism the scientific name ensures that each organism has only one name description of any organism should enable the people in any part of the world to arrive at the same name they also ensure that such a name has not been used for any other known organism biologists follow universally accepted principles to provide scientific names to known organisms each name has two components the generic name and the specific epithet this system of providing a name with two component is called binomial nomenclature this naming system was given by carlos linnaeus is being practiced by biologists all over the world this naming system using a two word format was found convenient let us take the example of mango to understand the way 
of providing scientific names better the scientific name of mango is written as mangifera indica let us see how it is a binomial name in this name mangifera represent the genus while the indica is a particular species or a specific epithet other universal rules of the nomenclature are as follows biological names are generally in latin and written in italics they are latinized or derived from latin irrespective of their origin the first word in the biological name represent the genus while the second component denotes the specific epithet both the words in a biological name when handwritten are separately underlined or printed in italics to indicate the latin origin the first word denoting the genus starts with a capital letter while the specific epithet starts with a small letter it can be illustrated in the example given below name of the author appears after the specific epithet that is at the end of the biological name and is written in an abbreviated form example mangifera indica lin it indicates that this species was described by linnaeus since it is nearly impossible to study all the living organism it is necessary to devise some means to make it this possible this process is called classification classification is the process by which anything is grouped into convenient categories based on some easily observable characteristics for example we easily recognize groups such as plant or animal or dog or cat or insect the moment we use any of these term we associate certain character with the organism in that group what image do you see when you think of a dog obviously each one of us will see a dog and not cats now if we were to think of alsatians we know that we are talking about similarly suppose we were to say mammals you would of course think of mammals or the animals with external ears and body hair likewise in plants if we try to talk of wheat the picture in each of our mind will be of a wheat plant and not of a rice plant or any other plant hence all these dogs cats mammals wheat rice plants and animals etc are convenient categories we use to study organisms the scientific term for these categories is taxa here you must recognize that taxa can indicate categories at different level plant also forms a taxa wheat is also a taxa similarly animal mammal dog are all taxa but you know that a dog is a mammal and mammals are animals therefore animals mammals dog represent taxa at different levels hence based on characteristic all living organism can be classified into different taxa this process of classification is taxonomy external and internal structure along with the structure of cell developmental processes and ecological information of organism are essential and form basis of modern taxonomy hence characterization identification classification and nomenclature are the processes that are basic to taxonomy taxonomy is not something new human beings have always been interested in knowing more and more about the various kinds of organism particularly with reference to their own use in early days human beings needed to find sources for their basic needs of food clothing and shelter hence the earliest classification were based on the uses of various organism human beings were since long not only interested in knowing more about different kind of organisms and their diversities but also the relationship among them this branch of study was referred to as systematics the word systematics is derived from the latin word systema which means systematic arrangement of organisms linnaeus used systema naturae as the title of his publication The scope of systematics was later enlarged to include identification, nomenclature, and classification. Systematics takes into account evolutionary relationship between organisms. Taxonomy categories. Classification is not a single step process but involves hierarchy of steps in which each step represents a rank or category. Since the category is a part of a overall taxonomic arrangement, it is called a taxonomic category and all the categories together constitute the taxonomic hierarchy. Each category referred to as a unit of classification in fact represents a rank and is commonly termed as taxon. Taxonomic categories and hierarchy can be illustrated by an example. Insect represent a group of organisms sharing common feature like three pairs of jointed legs. It means insect are recognizable concrete objects which can be classified and thus were given rank or category. Can you name other such group of organism? Remember group represent category. category for the denotes rank each rank or taxon in fact represent a unit of classification these taxonomic groups or categories are distinct biological entities and not merely morphological aggregates taxonomical studies of all known organism have led to the development of common categories such as kingdom phylum or division class order family genus and species all organism including those in the plant and animal kingdom have species as the lowest category 
Now the question you may ask is how to place an organism in various categories. The basic requirement is the knowledge of character of an individual or group of organism. This helps in identifying the similarities and dissimilarities among the individuals of same kind of organism as well as of the other kind of organisms. Taxonomic studies consider a group of individual organisms with fundamental similarities as a species. One should be able to distinguish one species from other closely related species based on a distinct morphological differences. Let us consider Mangifera indica, Solanum tuberosum, and Panthera leo. All the three names, indica, tuberosum, and leo, represent the specific epithets, while the first word, Mangifera, Solanum, and Panthera, are genera and represent another higher level of taxon or category. Each genus may have one or more than one specific epithet representing different organisms but having morphological similarities. For example, Panthera has another specific epithet called Tigris and Solanum includes species like Nigrum and Melongena. Human beings belong to the species Sapiens which is grouped in the genus Homo. The scientific name thus for human being is written as Homo sapiens. Genus comprises of a group of related species which has more characters in common in comparison to the species of other genera. We can say that genera are aggregates of closely related species. For example, potato and brinjal are two different species but both belong to the same genus Solanum. Lion, Panthera leo, leopard, Panthera pardus, and tiger, Panthera tigris, with several common features, are all species of the genus Panthera. This genus differs from another genus Felis, which includes cats. Family the next category family has a group of related genera with still less number of similarities as compared to the genus and species family are characterized on the basis of both vegetative and reproductive features of the plant species among plants for example three different genera solanum petunia and datura are placed in the family solanaceae among animals for example genus panthera comprising lion tiger leopard is put alongside genus felis of cats in the family Felidae. Similarly, if you observe the features of a cat and dog, you will find that the similarities and some differences as well. They are separated into two different families, Felidae and Canidae respectively. Order You have seen earlier that categories like species, genus and families are based on number of similar characters. Generally, order and other higher taxonomic categories are identified based on aggregate of characters. Order being a higher category is the assemblage of families which exhibit a few similar characters. The similar characters are less in number as compared to the different genera included in a family. Plant families like Convolvulaceae, Solanaceae are included in the order Polymonials, mainly based on the floral characters. The animal order Carnivora includes families like Felidae and Canidae. Class This category includes related orders. For example, order Primata comprises of monkey, gorilla and gibbon comprising of monkey, gorilla and gibbon is placed in class Mammalia along with order Carnivora that includes animals like tiger, cat, dog. Class Mammalia has other orders also. Phylum Classes comprising animals like fish, amphibians, reptiles, birds along with mammals constitute the next higher category called phylum. All these based on a common feature like presence of notochord or dorsal hollow neural system are included in the phylum chordata. In case of plants, classes with a few similar characters are assigned to a higher category called division. Kingdom All animals belonging to various phyla are assigned to a highest category called kingdom animalia in this classification system of animals. The kingdom plantae on the other hand is, is distinct and comprised of all plants from various divisions. Henceforth, we will refer to these two groups as animal and plant kingdom. The taxonomic categories from species to kingdom have been shown in ascending order starting from species in figure 1.1. These are broad categories, however, taxonomists have also developed subcategories in this hierarchy to facilitate more sound and scientific placement of various taxa. Look at the hierarchy in figure 1.1. Can you recall the basis of the arrangement? Say for example, as we go higher from species to kingdom, the number of common characteristics goes on decreasing. Lower the taxa, more are the characteristics that the member within the taxon share. Higher the character category, greater is the difficulty of determining the relationship to the other taxa at the same level. Hence, the problem of classification becomes more complex. Taxonomical aids. The taxonomic studies of various species of plants, animals, and other organisms are useful in agriculture, forestry, industry, and in general in knowing our bioresources and their diversity. These studies would require 
करेक्ट क्लासिफिकेशन एंड आइडेंटिफिकेशन ऑफ ऑर्गेनिजम्स आइडेंटिफिकेशन ऑफ ऑर्गेनिजम रिक्वायर इंटेंसिव लेबोरेटरी एंड फील्ड स्टडीज द कलेक्शन ऑफ एक्चुअल स्पेसिमेन एंड प्लांट एंड एनिमल स्पीसीज एसेंशियल एंड इज द प्राइम सोर्स ऑफ टेक्सोनॉमिक स्टडीज दीज आर ऑल्सो फंडामेंटल टू स्टडीज एंड एसेंशियल फॉर ट्रेनिंग इन सिस्टमेटिक्स इट इज़ यूज फॉर क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ एन ऑर्गेनिजम एंड द इन्फॉर्मेशन गैदर इज ऑल्सो स्टोर्ड अलॉन्ग विद द स्पेसिमेंस इन सम केसेज द स्पेसिमेन इज प्रिजर्व फॉर फ्यूचर स्टडीज बायोलॉजिस्ट हैव एस्टेब्लिश सर्टन प्रोसीजर्स एंड टेक्निक्स टू स्टोर एंड प्रिजर्व द इन्फॉर्मेशन एज वेल एज द स्पेसिमेंस सम ऑफ दीज आर एक्सप्लेन टू यू टू हेल्प यू टू अंडरस्टैंड द यूसेज ऑफ दीज एड्स हर्बेरियम Herbarium is the storehouse of collected plant specimen that are dried, pressed and preserved on sheets. Further these sheets are arranged accordingly to an universally accepted system of classification. These specimen along with the description on herbarium sheet become a storehouse or repository for future use. The herbarium sheet also carry a label providing information about date and place of collection, English, local and botanical name, family, collector name etc. Herbaria also serve as a quick referral system in taxonomical studies. botanical garden these specialized garden have collection of living plant for references plant species in these garden are grown for identification purposes and each plant is labeled indicating its botanical and scientific name and its family the famous botanical garden are at q england indian botanical garden howrah india and national botanical research institute lucknow india museum Biological museums are generally set up in the educational institutes such as schools and colleges. Museum have collection of preserved plant and animal specimens for study and reference. Specimens are preserved in the container and jar in preservative solutions. Plant and animal specimen may also be preserved as dry specimens. Insect are preserved in insect boxes after collecting, killing and pinning. Large animal like birds and mammals are usually stuffed and preserved. Museum often have collection of skeletons of animals too. Zoological park these are the places where wild animals are kept in protected environment under human care and which enable us to learn about their food habit and behavior. All animal in the zoo are provided as far as possible the condition similar to their natural habitat. Children love visiting these park commonly called zoo. Key key is another taxonomical aid used for identification of plants and animal based on their similarities and dissimilarities. Keys are based on the contrasting character generally in a pair called couplet. It represents the choice made between two opposite options. This result in acceptance of only one and rejection of the other. Each statement in the key is called a lead. Separate taxonomic keys are required for each taxonomic category such as family, genus and species for identification purpose. Key are generally analytical in nature. flora manual monograph and catalogs are some other means of recording descriptions they also help in correct identification flora contains the actual account of habitat and distribution of plants of a given area these provide the index to the plant species found in a particular area manuals are useful in providing information for identification of names of species found in an area monograph contain information on any one taxon